Hi all, everything in my video is pulled from the public domain and I am using them under the Fair Use Fair Dealings Guidelines. Everything I say is my own opinion. You should look into this information for yourselves, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. Happy Friday morning, everybody. I hope everybody is having an absolutely fabulous day today. We have, once again, a lot of information to cover. I'm telling you, this stuff literally writes itself. <laughs> now, um, I have, again, for you guys, a message at the very end of the video about some of the comments that you guys have been putting up about my channel. Hey, so I'm just going to do a quick little video at the end to explain to you what's happening from my point of view, okay? In the meantime, let's just jump in and get there. There's so much, shall we? Let's go. Well, starting off, Princess Anne has been unseated as the hardest working royal. That's right. King Charles has carried out 4,854 engagements between 2013 and 2022 with Princess Anne behind at 4,900, I'm sorry, 4,693. Go, Charles! Next up, Flowers of the Farm. They were the ones that had these seasonal flowers. Um, put up a notice letting us know that their flowers from the coronation were donated to hospices and care homes all over London, including St. Peter's Residence Care Home. I think that that's just lovely. Moving on. All right, next up, Edward has been busy. You'll notice in these pictures that the, the thing I'm about to show you, every it's the same suit every time. It's amazing. So there was a UK Overseas Territories and Crown Dependency Environmental Ministers Council meeting. That is a mouthful. And um, the Falklands, for the third time, were represented by Teslin Barkman, and they had great discussions, and it's just a wonderful thing. It's They held their first meeting on the implications of Brexit for the overseas territories today. I just love that kind of stuff. So when Edward was done here, then he went and attended the handover uh, to the British Red Cross team, the Defender, the Platinum Jubilee Defender 130 that the Queen used. And it has now entered active service. And this took place at Windsor. Now, when Edward finished there, he headed over to the Royal Windsor Horse Show. I'm, I'm assuming this is the order of events. Uh, because after attending the event, um, Edward, or the Duke of Edinburgh, who he's the president of the Royal Windsor Horse Show, he used a virtual headset in a riding simulator. Afterwards, as you could also see from the photos, he went to the shopping village there. Apparently, there's all kinds of stuff up for sale. Okay, next up, it's now being reported that King Charles spoke to Harry the night before the coronation. Um, this I tend to believe because otherwise Harry wouldn't have been sitting in the Abbey next to Jack Brookbanks bending his ear about I'm sick of the way I'm treated by this family. So yes, I do think a meeting took place. More Netflix content. Moving on, we know that Megan has a, a fun-filled month of May filled with, you know, getting awards that she didn't earn. This is part of the whole narcissism thing, okay? So like for instance, the 2023 Women of Vision Awards. She hasn't done anything. We know that she only works an hour a week, but she's getting this award because she's friends with Gloria Steinem. So again, unlike the royals who point out goods that other people do, to feed her narcissistic tendencies, she's running around collecting awards, going on stages where she'll then give 20 minute speeches where she'll talk about Mimi, because that's what she does. We, we know that she's getting an award for the Archetypes podcast where she barely let any of her guests speak. Remember with each podcast, she would turn the attention to herself and then throw out some story about how she was a victim. Yeah, yeah, it's really sad actually. Moving on. All right, 
Now we're going to move on to this entire, I was packed while I was taking a hike with my friends thing, okay? We've all seen the pictures. Megan saw the cameras. She was staring right at him. She was smiling into the camera, hands on her hips. She was posing. We saw it. We're not stupid. Well, Neil Sean, <laughs> you know, I love his stuff. Neil Sean goes on and basically says that according to Megan's team, they had no idea that the dial a pap back grid was going to be there. And they are launching an investigation into finding out how anybody knew that they were going to be there for that walk. You guys, how many times has she called the paps, just like in Canada when she was looking up and smiling at the bushes because she knew the people were there? How about this picture? Remember, she was caught the night before Louie's birthday photo came out with a full facial picture of Archie, which is illegal in California. And she said, we're going to take action. That's illegal. And then you never heard another thing about it again. The reason you didn't hear anything else about it again is because she was in on it and you can't sue when you call the paparazzi. Now, Megan Kelly also came out and said that those hiking photos were absolutely staged. Nobody does that. Nobody stands there and looks right at the camera and smiles right, smiles left, hand on the hips, shoulders back. Let's look this way. Wait, I need to taunt my arms. They must see the muscles. Whoops, forgot to smile there for a second. I mean, absolutely these photos were staged. She also said the fact that she didn't look at these people and say, what are you doing here? The fact that she just looked up and started smiling at them is a little suspect. And she said, and who in the heck wraps this thing around their neck like that? Nobody does. A silk scarf as you're going hiking in the woods. Come and where's the water? Oh, that's right. We forgot to bring water. <laughs> like, come on, stage, staged. Seriously, with the with the weight belt and the people are saying she's on Ozempic. I mean, I guess anything's possible. But as you can see, she's looking straight into the camera. Now she could have looked up and said, "What are you doing here?" We know what she was doing. She was marching. She's wearing her friend's necklace. She knows that they're going to zoom in and they're going to look at each item of what she's wearing. And of course, it was printed in the magazine that this particular necklace was done by her friends, Maya Brenner and Abigail Spencer. So she was merching her friend's products. That's what she was doing. She's done this so many times, you guys. It's so predictable. You won't hear another word about this. Her investigation, indeed. <sighs> Moving on. This article didn't surprise me. Apparently, Millie McIntosh came out and said that she became pals with Meghan Markle after they met at an event in Turkey. And that when they moved to London, she and Meghan met up and she showed Meghan all of her favorite hot spots. And that things changed the second she heard that she and uh, Harry were dating. She said she sent Megan a message offering her well wishes and got back a very abrupt response. So basically she got snubbed by Megan and she said, that's it, I'm not contacting her again. She also let it slip that she gave Megan all of her contacts when she moved to London. So yeah, Megan had everything she wanted from her, so she dumped her. That's her MO. Ugh. All right, moving on. I want to, I have to talk about Shouty Shola. If anything, this story tells me that I would not be good as a TV presenter. Let me explain. This young lady you see on the screen was doing a show and she said, I'm so happy and pleased to have this person back on the panel. And then she tried to say Shouty Shola's full legal name, which she could not pronounce. I can't pronounce it. A lot of people can't pronounce it. So Shola goes, no, darling, start again. And the woman tries it again. And she says it the best she can. And shouty Shola goes, no, dear, again. She refuses to continue until this woman says her name good enough for shouty Shola. So here's my point. I would have looked at her and said, I'm sorry, I'm going to call you Dr. Shola, and uh, if that doesn't work for you, you can leave. I, I need to get on with my interview. I wouldn't have let somebody do that to me on TV. 
You know, you guys know I don't like name calling. I don't like attacking the way people look. But when I look at her, that hair of hers, seriously, I mean, it, it looks like snakes. It looks like yarn. It looks like spaghetti. Moving on. All right, here we go. Prince Harry's lawsuit. Let's just take a look at this really quickly. We know that he's accused the mirror. It's called the Daily Mirror of um, phone hacking and getting unlawful gathering information about him. Now, this is where things get a little interesting. The Mirror Group has admitted to snooping around for an article that came out in 2004. That's right, 19 years ago. And the headline was Sex on the Beach with Harry. And But the story in question they're saying, the article says, was not one of the nearly 150 that Harry says came from illegally gathering information about him from 1995 to 2011. Now, they've said that Harry and these others have waited too long to bring their claims. Remember, he started the lawsuit with William. William stuck with it. William got a very nice settlement. Harry didn't, you know, want to wait around. He took too long. And now it could be that the statute of limitations has expired. Now, Harry is claiming that um, he had his voice messages hacked and some other things done. And because of it, he couldn't trust anybody. He became uh, paranoid. His circle of friends, you know, went down because he didn't know who to trust. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in other words, it had nothing to do with his drug abuse or, you know, his drinking or no, it was the tabloids. It was all the tabloids fault. Just remember, nothing is his fault. You have to keep that in mind. Now he's claiming that Piers Morgan knew about the hacking as well. And this is where I think his attorneys made some big boo-boos. If you look at what this Twitter user put, He's claiming that Piers Morgan told the world he had glandular fever. That diagnosis was confirmed by Buckingham Palace. It was confirmed by St. James Palace. Is he planning on suing them next? Is that, here's the article. Let me help you out, it's small. I'm gonna give you a quick cap. He told people he felt well enough to join his dad and his brother on the private trip and he flew to Zurich and then he was driven to the cloisters and William um, flew separately and joined them there. He's going against doctor's orders. He's not going to rest and he's on meds for the highly infectious disease, which leaves him with painful joints and a sore throat. And this is an illness that is seen a lot among teenagers. Oh yes, oh yes. That was one of the instances that was put forward by his attorney in court. Clearly, that has nothing to do with phone hacking. Or, I like this one from Unlikely Bot. Here is another article that was supposedly were proven to be obtained through illegal means. Now, here's what the article says. It says, Harry apologizes for the scandal in January after he admitted smoking marijuana and heavy drinking at private parties and a pub near his father's home in Highgrove. So they talked about his illegal drinking and then they talked about he's had back injuries, he's chipped a bone in his thumb, arms been in a sling, all of his injuries, but that came from his family, not illegal hacking. I agree, his attorneys are sloppy because what's come out now is that one of the articles that he's complaining about was based um, on an on-the-record interview that Harry himself gave. I mean, really, he's going to make a fool out of himself. And he can't be trusted on the witness stand. We already know that he's a liar. And supposedly, he's going to have Omid Scobie on the stand also, another person who's already been caught perjuring. Like, this is going to turn into a three-ring circus. Well, it already has. It's also come out that... Harry helped a friend. He tried to promote a friend's nightclub by capitalizing on his royal status. Remember, his relationship with the paparazzi was hunter versus prey. But apparently what he did was he purposefully used the main entrance of a London nightclub called Public. That's the name of it. He went there in his youth uh, and he went there, he said, to give a huge PR boost to a friend 
who used to party there. Can you believe that? The co-owner, Guy Pelly, arranged for Harry to be photographed outside the public because his presence was, quote unquote, amazing for its profile. So his whole, that just blew his whole argument out of the water. It's, he's rank hypocrisy. Here's another article where Harry apparently broke his thumb. Remember I told you about that earlier. The point is, Harry is insisting that all of this information, all of these articles, all the information in them was gotten, if they're ill-gotten, which it's not true. That just shows you how bad his memory is. My goodness. You want some more hypocrisy? How about what this Twitter user put up? Harry is saying that Kate received suspicious phone calls, which is an invasion of her privacy. But then, of course, we already know that he published in the spare private text messages between her and Megan. So it's okay for him to breach Catherine's privacy, but it's not okay to breach his privacy. You guys see it? It's, he's so hypocritical, it's horrible. So I myself, I'm going to be very interested because even the judge, we know, we know, and I've reported to you already, that even the judge is questioning Harry's recollection of events. And the fact that he has put forth evidence to show he was hacked, that and some of the evidence he put forth are interviews that he gave, things that Buckingham Palace said, things that St. James Palace said. I think if you put all that together, it shows that Harry's case is very weak. Now, here's the part that really gets me. And I completely agree with this. Essentially, Harry has stated in a court of law that the media messed up his life and basically Chelsea was the love of his life and that's who he would have married had the media not scared her off. That's what he's claiming, that the media scared her off. She Royal life wasn't for her because it was too intrusive, et cetera, et cetera. I'm wondering what Megan's thinking about that. Now, I'm not the only person to think that was the love of his life. This was on TV, I believe, before the wedding. Now, I find it interesting that the man says, somebody has to say it, and the women are falling apart. Watch this. They try to come back well, around. Well, it doesn't 20... work, it doesn't work. Yeah. You have to move on. But she and tried to come it. back in yeah. 2015, and it still didn't work. I feel like that's the true love of his life, and he's just with Megan. <gasps> well, why? Jordan, no. how dare you? Jordan, no. don't you dare. Jordan. <laughs> All right, we're almost done. Next up, a blind item came out that basically said she went to meet the people at her new agency and they had to call her the Duchess. That doesn't shock me. All right, before I give you my message, <laughs> this was sent to me by somebody on Twitter. I'm not going to give her name because then the squad will attack her. You guys, they developed a pledge for Harry and Meghan. If this is not the epitome of what I'm talking about, that they're, they're, they're like brainwashed cult. We pledge to you, the royals of Montecito. Oh my God, you guys, I spit my coffee out. That's saying something. Hi guys. Okay, so here's what I wanted to tell you. Yesterday, I got so many comments from people. My like button's not working. I've already told you too. I couldn't find you, even though I've hit the bell and the button. And, and I didn't get notification. You need to tell YouTube. Ah, oh, I, I can't find you and I've subscribed and I keep getting unsubscribed. You need to tell YouTube. And for the people that have been writing going, oh, your numbers are going up. What usually happens is my numbers go up and then they grab 30, 40 people and my numbers go back down. So as of today, I am still in the 57,500 realm. Yes, I know, I went up by like 30, 40 people, but then YouTube unsubscribed 40, 50 people and knocked me right back down and this is the problem. And there's nothing I can do about it, guys. So in the future, when YouTube is messing with your account and unsubscribing you and not giving you notifications and your like bells, you know, button's not working, you have to tell YouTube. Because when I tell them, they tell me it's, it's, I'm incorrect and it's nothing that they're doing. Sorry. All right, you guys, I am finishing up with this picture of Harry because I just think this was the last time I saw him truly happy. 
I know, I know. All right, you guys. So leave those comments below. You know I'm watching them and I'm reading them. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. Don't forget to go up into the description box and get the links to my Twitter, my Getter, my Rumble, my email, and my physical address in case you want to mail me something. For those of you who donated through the coffee fund and through my thanks button, thank you so much. And as always, you guys, have a great day.